Gatsby's magic emanates not only from its powerhouse poetic style, but from the authority with which it nails who we want to be as Americans. Not who we are, but who we want to be. It's that wanting that runs through every page of Gatsby, making it our greatest American novel. But it's also our easiest great American novel to underrate. Too short, too tempting to misread as just a love story gone wrong, too mired in the roaring twenties and all that jazz. Compared to its two closest contenders, Gadsby seems confined. Moby Dick takes place on the ocean. Gadsby offers a swimming pool. Huckleberry Finn lights out for the territory. Gadsby restlessly commutes the few miles of new roadway back and forth between East and West Egg and Manhattan. Being short gives Gadsby one clear advantage over the big boys. It's more likely to be assigned as required reading. In fact, Gadsby is the one American novel that most educated Americans have read. The bad news is that we read it in high school, when we were much too young, too defensive emotionally, too ignorant about the life-deforming powers of regret. When we make our first chain gang shuffle into Gadsby, we spend so much time preparing for standard test prompts on the eyes of Dr. T.J. Eckelberg and the color of Gadsby's car, and above all, the symbol of the green light at the end of Daisy's dock, that the larger point of the novel gets lost. It's not the green light, stupid. It's Gadsby's reaching for it that's the crucial all-American symbol of the novel. Because it's been a mainstay for over half a century on high school reading lists across the land, The Great Gadsby is the one great American novel we think we've read, but probably haven't.